hi year 11 okay we're going to focus on this text which is about um a guy called alfred um and it's about a rat so i'm going to call it alfred and the rat um we're going to recap um question two which is language and we're also going to look at question three um structure okay so i'm going to write about structure first um and i'm going to do my best to keep my notes all on one side of the sheet we'll see how well i do at that um now let's just recap like we do um, or have done previously remember when we're writing about structure structure is question three we need to write about the beginning, we need to write about the middle, we need to write about the end. We need to write um, using some quotations or at least um, refer to what happens in the text. That's actually absolutely fine as well. We need to make sure that we use some relevant subject terminology. Um, we need to make sure we talk about what the focus is and why the writer is focusing on that kind of thing. Um, and we need to focus on what changes and why the writer um, focuses on those kind of things. Um, but essentially, almost what this question is asking you to do is summarize each paragraph um, and then make some inferences. All right. So as long as we write about the beginning, middle and end and we summarize and we infer um, and we do these things here, um, there's no reason why we shouldn't be getting full marks. So. Alfred, a young British soldier, soldier, finds himself alone in the trenches of France during World War I. Let's read the first paragraph. Alfred felt something move. It came out of the mud in the dark behind his back where he sat cold and drowsily slumped against the trench wall. Something small and warmly alive pushed itself between the wooden slats and his battle dress jacket. It touched for an instant the small exposed area of his pale, dirty skin, just where his jacket and vest were folded and rucked up together. He could feel something struggling and pushing to get past him. He shot up in revulsion. He knew just what it was. A filthy rat, he shouted to no one in particular. OK, let's stop at that bit there. All right. So that would basically be our beginning. Those first two paragraphs there. And um, so. If we look at the beginning, um, we can label that bit there and then we know what we're writing about when we do this bit. It says Alfred felt something move. All right. Um, so it goes jumps straight into the action. Um, and we know that that has a special name, that technique where we start in the middle of the action. Um, so we can note here that, that technique is immediate res. Um, because we start in the middle of the action. Now, this is interesting because it says Alfred felt something move. Alfred doesn't know what it is, but nor do we. Neither does the reader. Just realised I need to move my sheet over. There we go. So the reader doesn't know what it is either. So we can note that down here. This technique has been deliberately used to create this idea that neither we, we're the reader, um, nor Alfred know what it is. And then the writer, oh, I'll put what is, is, what it is. Then the writer carries on describing them, where it came from, um, something small, um, so that we can say that here the, the focus um, is on uh, this thing, but we don't know what this thing is. All right. So we are um, just as keen to find out um, and we read on because we want to find out what it is. And this um, um, paragraph uh, basically um, builds um, towards um, the dialogue. Where it suddenly says rat here. Um, Rat, he shouted to no one in particular. And the reader kind of finds out at exactly the same time um, as Alfred does. Um, so we're kind of identifying with Alfred here. So we can put the reader identifies with Alfred or we sympathise with, you know, how this sort of disgust um, because we... We realise and we find out at the same time 
he does. Um, and this shift from description um, to dialogue um, creates that kind of abrupt sh um, change. So if we put here the focus is on this thing, um, and it's also the focus is on very much on description, um, and then it builds towards this um, dialogue, um, which creates um, an abrupt change. And the effect there is it's almost kind of quite um, shocking um, and startling for the reader. Um, again, both for the reader um, and it helps to convey um, Alfred's shock too and how he's feeling. So we've got plenty there to write about the beginning and we only really need um, to write about these two points um, okay, um, for writing about the beginning. So now let's look at the middle. All right, we're going to say these two paragraphs here are the middle. Let's read them first. He saw it there pushing through and twisting its head, saw the wet greasy fur and its mean red eyes. He kicked at it and missed. The rat scuttled out from the tiny gap between the slat supports and ran across the mud. Normally Alfred would have let it go. Rats were after all commonplace. But something, whether pent up anger, hate, loss, pain, boredom, whichever it was, made him give chase after it. Now we can see the change here. All right, before the focus on the rat, um, and now the focus um, is still on the rat. But in this paragraph, um, the rat was coming towards Alfred, um, and he didn't want anything to do it. Now, um, Alfred is chasing the rat. Okay, so um, let's um, make notes on that there then, in terms of um, what we're going to say about structure. So the focus um, is still on the rat. But in terms of what has changed, uh, what's changed, uh, we can say before, I'm going to write before, um, rat was pursuing, that means like going after, um, pursuing Alfred. Now, Alfred pursues the rat. So we need um, a quotation that we're um, going to use for that point. Um, we can just have that bit where he says he's going to give it chase afterwards or normally Alfred would have let it go um, but actually he decides he decides to follow it. Um, so that's fine, we know what the focus is, we know what's changed but we need to be thinking about well why? Why um, is suddenly now um, Alfred pursuing the rat? The creature appeared sluggish it said as if it were weighed down with overeating. It had most likely been feeding on what was caught, left behind in the lines and coils of barbed wire, which stretched for miles beyond the trench, the terrible sad debris of dead soldiers, the remains that were left behind after a 6am push. Now we need to be thinking here about the fact that um, Alfred is um, in the trenches, he's probably not got enough food, he's cold, he's wet, um, he's emotionally exhausted, he's physically exhausted, um, he's probably traumatised as well by um, what he's seeing. And now we now find out that this rat is kind of feeding um, on his dead friends, on the, on the debris of dead soldiers. Um, so when it says normally Alfred would have let it go, um, it's all these kind of different emotions and things that are going on that make him kind of um, chase after it. And it's almost like the rat um, has now become a target um, for um, all of these pent up emotions. In fact, he even says pent up anger, doesn't he there? Um, and maybe that's the reason why um, he kicks at it. Um, so we want to note here that um, Alfred pursues the rat. Um, uh, the rat is... Um, like a target now um, for Alfred um, and it's really focusing on his um, frustration and his dire, um, uh, desire for re revenge so the rat um, is a target um, for Alfred's um, frustration and revenge he's kind of angry at him for entering entering his um, personal space um but it 
um, also suggests this kind of like anger at the fact that um, this this rat is um, fat from basically eating his mates, um, which you know is has, has just basically pushed Alfred over the edge. Okay, so that's what we would talk about for the for the focus um, of the middle, um, how it's changed and, and what the effect is. Um, so at this point, we, we kind of feel um, a huge amount of um, sympathy for um, Alfred because his, his situation seems so, so hopeless, really, that, um, you know, the only thing that he can get angry at um, is a rat. So there's almost a kind of um, hopelessness. Um, almost like a kind of irony, isn't there, that um, he's supposed to be um, fighting soldiers and fighting a war, and actually he ends up having a having a, a fight with a, a rat. Um, so um, it becomes a war with a rat rather than a war um, with, um, uh, I suppose, that even the rat is an enemy um, <laughs> with other humans. Everything has become an enemy now um, for Alfred, um, so we can note that as well. Um, and so a really nice word that we can use here as well as irony and as well as um, this idea of hopelessness um, is a sense of futility, um, which kind of basically means um, pointlessness. Um, it seems futile um, um, so if I put in brackets under there um to be to be chasing after this rat why why is he race, wasting his energy on him and then we get to the last bit, so we've got two more paragraphs here um so we can talk about this as the end right let's have a look at this bit here. Before it was light, after the heavy artillery bombardments and the whistles and the bright spray of flares and the shouting and the very lights, the men streamed over, filtered through the narrow gaps in the wire. Whole portions of them, however, were miraculously left behind, bits of men hooked up and hanging there for all to see, like the display in an awful butcher's shop window, or if there were enough shreds and rags of uniform still attached to the limbs, then it was more like the washing on the line flapping on a Monday morning at home. Alfred had grown almost used to such sights. So the focus is definitely very different here. Um, if we think about this first bit, um, it's no longer on the rat. Let's um, just sort of separate that bit off here. So we're going to write about the end here. Um, so the focus is no longer on the rat. Um, we know the focus has changed. So uh, we're focusing on sort of just before sunrise. Um, and we're now focusing on the battlefield. And on the wall itself. So we see all the men kind of, it says streaming over. Um, and then it says whole portions of them, however, were miraculously left behind. Bits of men hooked up and hanging there for all to see. So they'd be um, caught on the kind of barbed wire. Um, they'd be shot and just... Um, sort of left there hanging um, and it describes it like a butcher's shop window um, now we can't go um too much um into the detail because we don't want to start thinking about the language but the overall impression of this um battlefield and of this site um is of the kind of um brutality um and the um harshness of war um, and how violent and gruesome it is. And here we, again, we can see this kind of sense of, fut oh, I've just written the same word twice there, I've written futile, futility, um, the kind of pointlessness um, of what is going on. These men are literally streaming over, and yet so many of them um, are just you know, just die and that's it. Um, and then this kind of single sentence on its own, Alfred had grown almost used to such sights. Um, the focus then very briefly changes um, back to Alfred. 
here um, and his um, acceptance um, of this violence. Now where it says here Alfred had almost grown used to such sights, um, that helps us to understand um, if we go back up why he wants to kick um, the rat. Um, so we can put we, the reader, um, understand now his emotions towards the rat. We kind of need something to take all these um, emotions out. And we've almost got the um, a contrast here, haven't we? The kind of um, violence of the um, battlefield contrasted with um, and the sort of disgust of the battlefield um, kind of compares to the um, disgusting way that the, that the rat is. This kind of, again, very kind of negative um, place. Um, but this shift here towards what the battlefield is actually like helps us to understand um, why Alfred's doing what he's doing. But also, again, it makes um, makes emphasizes the kind of pointlessness. Why is he bothering chasing after a rat when there's um, such bigger issues to worry about? OK, so that concludes all our notes about structure. But we're now going to look at it for language as well. So I'm going to change pen um, so that I can write about this in different colours. If you've got a different coloured pen and a different coloured highlighter, and that will really help you just separate out your notes. OK, so we're going to write about these middle two paragraphs um, for thinking about language. All right. Um, and we know um, if we make some notes at the top for language. We need to do a lot of the same things that we need to do here. We don't need to be writing about the beginning, middle or end, but we need to make sure that we're using quotations. We need to make sure that we're zooming in on detail, OK? Um, but the focus is very much on words and phrases rather than summarising whole paragraphs. We need to make sure we're using terminology. And we need to make sure that we're thinking about the effect um, of whatever the methods are, the techniques. Um, and that's really going into detail. The more we can infer, the more layers of meaning we can have, the better. So let's have a look then. Let's reread um, the first bit. He saw it there pushing through and twisting its head. Now, straight away, I noticed that we've got two words ending in I and G here. Um, and if you remember, these words that end in ing, we can call present participles. Participles. So um, the rat is pushing its way through and it's twisting its head. Um, we've got a sense of the forcefulness of the rat here. It's pushing um, and it's twisting. And um, so it seems kind of determined and there's a strong sense of action here. So these present participles, we can say give a sense of action and a sense of the, the forcefulness and determination of the rat. Um, so I should have said here, we're focusing on language to describe the rat. Um, then if we move on, we can see the rat is described as having wet, greasy fur um, and mean red eyes. So here, adjectives are going to be really important. Our terminology and our methods and techniques here, we're pushing, twisting part, present participles. And now we're moving on to adjectives. Um, so I'm going to make a little note up here, OK, about our adjectives. Um, so wet, greasy fur is certainly um, creating a sense of disgust towards the rat. Um, and that kind of echoes um, Alfred's hatred. We can see that in the way that he's described um, the rat, because remember, we're seeing it from his point of view. Um, and then um, we've also got this M um, word red, which I think is particularly um, good for us to focus on here. Um, I'm going to keep my notes up here. If we think about the um, imagery here, so we can also write about colour imagery. It's still an adjective, but um, it's just another method. Um, we can call it colour imagery. Um, and we can think about the connotations um, of red. So a little reminder there in terms of spelling. 
um, connotations of red are going to be um, evil, um, almost devilish. Um, so here the rat is definitely um, being presented as the enemy. Um, now, this is a bit ironic, really, isn't it? Because uh, the rat seems more of an enemy um, than the actual um, en enemy, which is the other side during World War I. Um, OK, so the connotations um, we put here are evil, devilish enemy. Um, but we can also say the effect here is, is one of irony. Um, uh, the rat um, is being presented as more um, of a threat, or the rat is being presented as the kind of opponent here, isn't it? Okay, so I'm just going to go over those notes because they're a bit squashed in there. So the colour imagery of the word red, the connotations here are evil and kind of making the rat seem devilish, presenting the rat as the enemy, which is ironic considering um, the setting of the story um, as the trenches in, in France in World War One, um, where um, you know the rat is the one being presented as um, more of a threat and more of an opponent um, than the other side. OK, um, so what else are we going to talk about in terms of the language that you use to describe the rat? Um, so Alfred kicks the rat and he missed and the rat scuttled out from the tiny gap between the slat supports and ran across the mud. This is a really interesting word here to describe the rat scuttled is telling us what the rat is doing. Um, so this is a verb, isn't it? It's an action word. All right. Um, and this creates a sense of the rat um, being um, uh, free. The rat is um, escaping. Um, escaping, uh, the rat is quick, um, and the rat seems to be um, unharmed. Alpha tried to kick him and he missed. Um, so actually, uh, one thing that's being suggested here um, is that the rat is not a threat. threat. Um, but also the other interpretation here is, um, this starts to kind of emphasise Alfred's anger, doesn't it? Because he um, isn't able to kill the rat, um, who is a much um, uh, less of a worry um, than uh, you know the real reason why he's there. Um, so he's not a threat. Threat, and this Alfred um, emphasizes Alfred's anger. Um, and we really get a sense of his um, uh, frustration, I guess. Um, at his inability um, to destroy the enemy, um, the rat, um, in, in this case. OK, so the rat scuttles out from the tiny gap between the slat um, and support uh, slat supports and ran across the mud. Normally, Alfred would have let it go. Rats were, after all, commonplace. But something with a pent up anger, hate, loss, pain, boredom, whichever it was, made him give chase after it. Now, I think this is a really interesting um, bit to write about here, too. Um, we've got this kind of long and um, strung out sentence um, and the use of ellipsis, those three dots there. Um, so that is another method that we can talk about um, in the way that ellipsis is um, structuring um, the sentence. Now, the use of ellipsis suggests that it doesn't really matter um, the reason um, for wanting to kill the rat um, is unimportant. And this tells us quite a lot about Alfred's mental state, doesn't it? Um, he doesn't care anymore. And I guess what's also being suggested, suggested here is he's forgotten um, why he wants to fight. He just wants to fight it. Um, and it's it, this is sort of emphasising that um, Alfred, you know, through his experiences, has turned into some kind of killing machine. He's, he's just blindly destroying um, any kind of living creature um, and anything um, sort of is a is a target because of his um, emotional state. 
Okay, we've probably got lots that we could write about. Um, we've probably got enough. We've got the present participles, and um, we've got the adjectives, we've got the verbs, we've got the use of ellipsis. Um, but we can write about the the rest of this paragraph and um, the second paragraph here as well. Um, so let's just have um, a little look here. The creature appeared sluggish. Okay, so again, there's a really interesting word choice um, in terms of describing the um, adjective, uh, uh, using the adjective sluggish to describe the rat, um, and combining that with this phrase here weighed down by overeating. I've just gone over it in different colour because you might want it to use it for structure as well, which is why we um, originally coloured it um, orange. So here we get an image of the rat getting fat um, because he's actually eating Alfred's friends. Um, and this really helps to put into position the, the unfairness of the situation. Um, and again, helps us to understand why um, the rat is um, such a target. OK, so let's try and kind of add those notes here. Um, weighed down and sluggish with overeating. Um, so this, I would say, let's talk about them, the effect here being one of um, exaggeration. And um, so it exaggerates um, the slowness um, and the size of the rat. Um, who has got this way um, because he has been essentially um, eating Alfred's um, uh, comrades, his fellow soldiers. Um, so again, this helps to um, emphasise, remember that word from before, the futility and um, the, the kind of um, hopelessness um, and the unfairness um, of the situation and helps to um, helps the reader really to understand Alfred's mindless violence towards um, another animal. Okay, we're probably running out of space now, but just let's have a look at this last bit. It says it had most likely been feeding on what was caught, left behind in the lines and um, in the lines and coils of barbed wire which stretched for miles beyond the trench, the terrible, sad debris of dead soldiers. Um, and the irony here is that um, the rat is free um, when the soldiers um, are dead and they are caught in this wire. Um, and that's what's so frustrating for Alfred because he wants to catch um, the rat and trap it and kill it and he can't. Um, so that's the kind of last bit that we that we need to add here. So if I just squeeze that in that gap, um, we've really got a sense of irony. So we can just put the rat equals free, but the soldiers are not. Um, so this is this sort of section here, this paragraph here is really um, trying to <laughs> get us to hate the rat um, as much as um, Alfred does um, because of because of what the rat has been doing. Um, um, and actually, there's another bit that we can uh, add here, which kind of helps to emphasize this is because the, the rat is sluggish, it's it's not even trying um, to get away. Um, it's almost really here like it's it's almost like it's kind of um, teasing Alfred. Um, almost like it doesn't care. Um, it realizes that it's probably in a more fortunate position um, than Alfred is essentially. Um, so it teases Alfred and it and um, it doesn't care. Um, almost like um, he's not bothered about being caught. Almost as, um, as if the rat has got the upper hand. All right, so I'm just going to read that back to you because my notes there are pretty squashed in. So we're writing still about this word sluggish. We've got some notes down here, but also we can say that the rat teases Alfred. The rat doesn't care. The rat is not bothered about being caught. Um, and the sense here then is that the, the rat seems to have the, um, the upper hand um, in some way. Um, and seems to be more fortunate um, than Alfred because the rat seems more free. Okay, you've got plenty on that sheet now to write about both of those questions.